Good morning, Bucknutters, and happy June. It is June 1st, 2017. I am Dan Rubin. This is the Bucknuts Morning 5 and Change. It's still Thursday, so that means Steve Wilfong, Director of Recruiting for 24-7 Sports. For the first time in several weeks, he is by himself. Steve, how goes it being the father of two? Good morning, Daniel. Going great, as you know. Uh, the life is good. And uh, excited to uh, have a family of four. Uh, but life is also good for Ohio State recruiting, as it is every week when we talk on this show. Yeah, there are some weeks in the off season where I say to myself, man, what are we going to talk about next week? And it never fails. These guys are recruiting like gangbusters. As I was writing down the names today, it's just, it's staggering. I'm out of superlatives. I hope everyone's enjoying this run. Um, there are many, 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 many elite programs in college football that have never, ever, ever recruited this level. So let's dig in. With the chronological vibe to start here, Taraja Mitchell, the standout linebacker out of the Virginia Beach area, is committing tomorrow. He is down to Ohio State and Florida State. I will admit I fall into the last visit to Tallahassee. Momentum slowed at Ohio State approach. I think Mitchell is going to be a seminal. What say you? It does sound like things are getting kind of interesting down the stretch here. Well, I think even some at Ohio State felt the same way, you know. But this week, talking to a couple sources, you know, one, around the Ohio State program told me that they think they're getting him. And then, you know, one that was skeptical a couple of weeks ago now, you know, is thinks it could happen, you know, is he's, you know, could see it going either way. So, you know, Florida State, they're certainly in it and, and feel good. And so, I, you know, my crystal ball is on Florida State. I haven't heard anything to – I haven't gotten the uh, – I'm in the position now where – you know, you can't switch unless you got the smoking gun. You know, it's just better to – if I'm on Florida State, you know, you don't want to switch on the last second and then he goes to Florida State, right? You know, I'd just rather be wrong on Florida State at this point because you don't have the smoking gun to push it over the top. But long story short, if Taraja Mitchell picks Ohio State tomorrow, I don't think anybody's going to be surprised. I am, but we can go from there. Um Ohio State was I had written this. a month ago or so, you know. I know it. And, uh, but the vibes, you know, the vibes. Florida State was considered the long-time it. favorite here. Florida State was con- considered the long-time favorite here. And then another school, you know, had mentioned that they thought it was, a, you know, thought it was Ohio State. And then another school thought it was Ohio State. And then you ask Ohio State and they feel good. But then the, the visit to Florida State, you know, Change the pulse for a second, you know. Again, but for most of this, yeah, most of this, people thought Taraja was going to Florida State, and, and so Ohio State, you know, really, you know, came on strong here and 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 made Taraja, at the very least, think very hard about being a Buckeye if he doesn't become one altogether. That commitment is tomorrow. We will have total coverage. Obviously, it's something you need to tune in on. Another big one this week and a name that, um, let's just say I have a negative vibe on Mitchell this whole time. I've had a similarly positive vibe on Texas defensive back Anthony Cook. To me, if you were a defensive back in the United States right now and Ohio State offers you, you should take the offer. You just crystal balled him. Give me the vibe on Cook. Well, I talked to a source that's close to Cook in Texas yesterday, and he told me, yeah, I mean, you saw what I wrote. I came out of it thinking it was Ohio State, and I think it's clearly Ohio State. You know, I think Texas would be the threat, and I'm not sure how big a threat they are with how good a job Ohio State has done recruiting Anthony with Terry Combs and Coach Ciano and Coach Meyer and company. Uh, they've really made Anthony feel uh, he is the number one corner but I don't think a program 
in the country has made Anthony feel like he's number one more so than Ohio State, and I think that has resonated with the quiet but confident player. My source compared him to, to Okuda from a personality standpoint. The two obviously uh, get along real well, um, too. So, And then my, then my uh, source, you know, added on and said, you know, Anthony's the type of young man that's going to do his own thing. And Texas is going to slay it in state. But he's not going to be – what I took from that, he's not going to be a guy that goes to Texas because all the other guys are going to Texas. I think if he ultimately goes to Texas, it would be because Texas' staff did a good job of convincing him that his future is best in Austin, not because of who he's going to be playing with, but because of him personally. So right now, Ohio State's done a really great job of connecting with Anthony and the people around him that they've built such an advantage that I, I just love where the Buckeyes sit for Anthony Cook. Yeah, and then you throw in, to me, what is just a haymaker aspect of it, and that's the guys being picked in the draft the last few years. Sure. And you can sure. literally you can literally write to him, look, straight line to the bank. And um, so that's one. And Ohio thing. State – and Ohio State typically recruits a touted guy, but some of those some of those cats that Ohio State sent to the league, they weren't the the guys that were ranked one or two or three at their position. You know, they, those were guys that went to Columbus and got developed into the the high ranking draft pick. No question. Um, I guess Eli Apple is kind of the prototype, but but, but I think you're right. I don't top think one hundred or or some of those other guys, and no one's been rated to where Cook is, so. That's beautiful. Right. Speaking of the top ranked player in his position, and we call it the Bucknuts Morning Five. It should be called the Zamir White Morning Five until he commits to the Buckeyes. What's the latest? I, I think, you know, talking to sources around Ohio State about Zamir in the last week, I, I, he continues to be extremely positive with the Ohio State staff. And there's several people that think that Zamir wants to go to Ohio State and then and that his mom, you know, would like to see him go to Georgia. And if you follow the visits, it still looks like Georgia. And if you want, he's announcing on his mom's birthday in June. If his mom, you just, if mom wants one thing and you want another and you're announcing on her birthday, you know, that's the thing I can't get around. But there's no question he really likes Ohio State. He's been there three times. He continues to be very positive with the staff. I think there's some confidence around the Woody that they can get him. And then Ohio State is not – they've really kind of locked in on Zamir. They have Brian committed, Brian Steed, of course, who's also one of America's top running backs. They have him committed, but they haven't really – they have some feelers out to some other guys, but they haven't really pushed for other guys yet, which, you know, makes me think that at Ohio State there's some confidence that they can get him before they go after some other guys that would then maybe beat Zamir to the punch, and then what do you do? Take three backs because you're not turning Zamir away, right? <laughs> so so that's kind of where Zamir's at right now. He's He's been outstanding with his communication with, with Ohio State and, and, and same with Georgia, so, you know, we'll see what happens. Yeah, this is, to me is the true fitty city because I, I get the mom vibe totally. And that usually trumps it, but it just so much feels like he wants to go to Ohio State. And given that it's Ohio State and that Georgia is not apexing as a program right now, especially on the recruiting front. So maybe the timing is right for this to work Ohio State's way. If I had to guess, I guess I would pick Georgia, given the mom hook, but it feels like this is going on for a while. I'm in the same boat Um, as you. I feel the same way, Daniel. Yeah. Like Cam Akers, I never felt was really coming. And then when it was for so, but this one I got a kind of a, this has gone on long enough. All right. There have been some other crystal balls that have been flipped this week. Not necessarily, in fact, not by you, but it's certainly worth addressing. I'm going to give you four names and then you maybe can address uh, what you know about any of them. Solomon Tulia Pupu, Daniel Carson, Andrew Chatfield, and Nesta Silvera. I do think that Cam Akers, it was either his dad or his stepdad. I do think one of them 
uh, was pushing for Ohio State, but obviously wasn't enough. Florida State did a great job there. LSU was in it. It is what it is. But to the to these other names, if if they got the the Solomon Tulia Pupu kid out of California, who who it's documented had a great visit to Ohio State in the spring, and there's no question he's thinking about the Buckeyes, but. I, if they got him, and I posted this on the front row, I, I could make an argument that would be the biggest recruiting win in the country, regardless of the prospect, regardless of the school. I'm on USC with my crystal ball. Those are the type of kids that USC closes. Um, so that would be a, just a, a hell of a win for Ohio State. Um, but Tom Loy, our Notre Dame insider, was at the school and uh, got a vibe that Ohio State was – in a good spot and crystal ball them and, and, and we'll see what happens. Um, when you're, when you're at the school, you do pick up those off the record nuggets. Um, but also, you know, when you, when you talk to teenagers, you know, they, they, in hell, Ohio State may lead for Solomon right now and, and Tom is spot on, you know, but USC, they're not going away for, for that kid that's in their backyard. It, it may even be a similar situation with Jackson Carmen and Clemson, you know, where Clemson leads but he lives an hour from Ohio State, you know, an hour and a half from Ohio State. The Buckeyes aren't going away. That doesn't mean I'm not ruling out Clemson for, for Carmen, uh, and that's even a little more feasible uh, than than Solomon from USC to Ohio State, in my opinion. Uh, the, the other young men, you know, they're all from South Florida. They visited Ohio State in mid-April. Um, they, they, you know, there's no question Ohio State resonated. It's easy. It'd be easy to crystal ball all these guys to, to Ohio State. You know, for me, I'm I'm interested to see how the board shakes out. And, and sometimes, you know, the Buckeyes have a guy higher on their board than than we thought or knew. You know, and and for instance, the the Petit Freer kid, the offensive tackle from from Tampa that I wrote about earlier in the week, I didn't realize he was a coveted target for for Ohio State, and, and didn't realize Ohio State was in the top three until earlier this week. So stuff just just pops up like that, and, and Nicholas Petit Freer, you know, he, he's a young man. Uh, Greg Schiano is leading the way on that recruitment. His, Schiano's son went to that high school, so he's got some inroads there as they battle Florida and, and Notre Dame, and, and then potentially Alabama for him. Um, the, the the Daniel Carson kid out of Missouri, he's got that great frame and, and body, so I could see it, but I haven't. I I myself have not had much dialogue. With, with Ohio State uh, sources uh, about where those guys are at on the board. But, but Carson is a guy that I know is looking at Nebraska, looking at Oklahoma, looking at Mizzou, and then looking at Ohio State. And, and so I would say those four are in a great spot uh, for him. Yeah, it does look like whatever happens, it's going to be another epic class. If they get Cook and Zamir White, to me, it's a, we're almost to gravy points. This, I will say this, the guy of the group I mentioned that jumped out to me is Nesta Silvera, committed to Miami. First of all, his middle name is, his name is Nesta, which is Bob Marley's middle name, which is a good start. And then he looks like a werewolf inside, and you can never have too many of those guys. So we will see. We appreciate Steve stopping by. It's another star-studded list. And uh, by this time next week, who else will be in the mix? We'll let you know. Have a good one, Bucknutters. Gentlemen, take care. Thanks, Daniel.